Solving one variable inequalities. So first we're going to look at what is an inequality. What does that mean? So we're used to seeing things like this. X equals 5. Right? Or maybe we would have started with 2x plus 3 equals 13. And we would have solved it to find that x equals 5. We're used to seeing equations where x has a certain value, right? x is equal to a number. And this is true of a lot of things in life, right? So, for example, you might go to the store and buy something, and that thing has a price, right? But maybe the price changes from day to day. So it's in a way, it's a variable. Well, there are also other types of expressions in algebra, other than expressions of equality, and they're called inequalities. So a good example of that would be x is less than 5. So we would read this, x is less than 5. What does this mean? Well, it means our variable, instead of just having one value, it has a range of possible values. We would often represent this on a number line. So if I had a number line that looked like this, maybe I start at negative 1 and I go up to 5. If x is less than 5, then x could be anything starting right over here and going this way. And it would go on forever, because the number line goes on forever. If x is less than 5, x could be negative 7,500,262, way down there on the number line. x could also be negative 1, or x could be 2. Or, if you think about it, it could also be numbers in between those. So x might be 1 half, or 2.786421349624962. So there's a million, there's infinite things that x could be. There's a lot of possibilities. And so we show it by showing on the number line this arrow. Could x be 5 if x is less than 5? Is 5 less than 5? No, it's not. And so to show that x couldn't actually be 5, on our number line, we use a hollow circle. So it's showing that this graph of our variable starts at 5, but does not include 5. That's why we have a hollow circle. It's showing that that's not, that number is not included. And it goes all the way down through all the negative numbers. Infinite. X is greater than negative 3. So we would read this. X is greater than negative 3. x is greater than negative 3, then x, our variable, could be anything bigger than, but not including, negative 3. One thing I want you to notice, as we turn these into graphs, if you write x first, the way that this little symbol points is the same as the end of our arrow. So if x is less than negative 5, the arrow kind of has that less than symbol on it. If x is greater than negative 3, the arrow kind of has that, less, that greater than symbol on it. You guys see what I'm talking about? This end of the arrow is sort of the same symbol as this. It points the same way. So this is like telling us how to make our graph x could be any number greater than negative 3. So it could be 0. It could be 
700. And there's two other types of inequalities. We have less than, we have greater than. We also have this symbol. This we would read x is, that's the greater than symbol. So we would say greater than, and the, the line underneath it means or equal to. So in this case, x is greater than or equal to 7. Think about going to an amusement park, right, and they say, this ride is only open to ages seven and up. No. The age of people who ride this ride would be greater than or equal to seven. Right? Because you could be seven. And on the graph, this looks a little different. It would be exactly. Yeah. So let's say our graph starts at five, six, seven, eight. To, because it could be equal to 7, we start with a filled-in circle, or a, a solid dot. And which way am I going to make the arrow point to show greater than or equal to? See one person showing with their fingers, right? It's got to go that way. All the numbers over here, and again, this symbol is showing us which way to make our arrow go. So this would be x is greater than or equal to 7. Yeah? So if the dot looks like a hard, so it stays there on the side? Uh-huh. Okay. So if it's like filled in, yeah, it's kind of like the 7 is included. It's kind of what it's trying to show. Okay. Right? And then the last symbol would be x is less than or equal to. So this we would read x is less than or equal to 3. And again, we're going to show that we're going to show that with a solid dot. So anytime we see this line underneath, whether it's greater than or less than, that's indicating to us a solid dot. But then, since this one is less than or equal to 3, we would say that the arrow would die. So let's look at what these problems are going to look like on your homework. You're going to actually have to solve the problems. Um, and this is very similar to what we just reviewed. It's very similar to solving equations. There's only really one or maybe two rules that are slightly different. If I give you a problem like this, 3x plus 1 is greater than 10, what would be your guess about the first step to solve it? What do you think you would do first? Subtract. Subtract what? One. Subtract 1. And you would be exactly right. That is exactly what I would do first. So these would cancel out. We'd have 3x is greater than, the symbol just stays the same, 10 minus 1 is 9. 3x is greater than 9. Divide How do you think it. we'd then solve? Divide off the 3. So x is greater than 3. Did, did you cancel out? Because mm -hmm. yeah. we're dividing it off. So x is greater than 3. And then we're not done. We're going to make that little graph to show this. So if I have a number line, right, maybe it starts at negative 2. Yeah. Well, on your homework, the number lines will already be there. Which, just so you know, is kind of a hint, because the number line includes the answer on it. So if you get an answer that's not on the number line, you made a mistake in solving the problem. Right? 
Okay, so x is greater than 3. How could I show that on my number line? Am I going to use a hollow dot or a solid dot? Hollow. Hollow, because it's not equal to. And am I going to go up or down? Up, because it's greater than. So that's the basic procedure. Let's do another problem like that. Maybe we would have something like x divided by 2 minus 5 is less than negative 3. I would say add the 5. Okay, yeah. so add the 5. That's going to cancel that. We'll have x over 2 is less than negative 3 plus 5 is 2. Wait, hold on. Now what? You'd multiply the 2. Oh, yeah, yeah, what's the opposite of x divided by 2? It's multiply. So we would want to multiply times 2. Whatever we do on that side, we have to do Which on this is side. Which is less than 4. x is less than 4. Wait, Don't forget, put this on your number line. How would I draw this on my number line? Yeah, all circles. Hollow dot going down this way or that way? Down. 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 This symbol mimics. Excuse me. Okay. All right. So there's two things that could throw you off of these. Can I erase this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here's the two things that could throw you off. The first is that sometimes they'll write the problem backwards. So if I had, for example, negative 2 is less than x plus 5, the first step that I would do here is I would reverse this problem. Because I want the x to be first. It's just going to help us really understand what the problem is saying. So instead of saying negative 2 is less than x plus 5, I'm just going to write this side, so x plus 5. I'm going to switch this symbol around. So do you see how the, the less than symbol is pointing towards the negative 2? I still want it pointing towards the negative 2. But now the negative 2 is over here. So I had to kind of flip that around in order to write the x plus 5. Um, I wouldn't count it wrong if you didn't flip it, but I bet that you would get the graph wrong a lot of times if you don't flip it. And I'll show you why. So let's actually solve this both ways. Both ways, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to subtract 5 from both sides. In this problem, we would have x is greater than negative 7. In this one, we would have negative 7 is less than x. Okay, how would you graph that? How would you graph this one? Let's start with that one. Well, you would find negative 7 on the same. Okay, so let's say we had negative 8, negative 7, and negative 6. And then you would put a hollow circle. Hollow circle. And go up. I would go this way? Yeah. You would? I go would. Up. Why would I go that way? Because x is greater than oh, Yeah, because yeah. what this really says is x is greater than negative 7. But do you see how that's confusing if we write it that way? Because it seems like negative 7 is less than, so it seems like our arrow should go less than. It's easier if you just write it like this because it's immediately obvious which way the arrow points. The arrow has to point the same way as our symbol. So that's why I think it's better to flip them around and write x first. It helps you keep track of which way you're going. And negative 7 is less than x. It just doesn't sound as good to me as x is greater than negative 7. Right? There's something about it that... It's like we want to know what the variable is. The variable is greater than negative 7. That's what we care about. We don't really care about negative 7 itself. Negative 7 is less than x. Okay, but what we care about is x. x is greater than negative 7. 
you see the difference in how they sound? It's like we're describing X with our new All right. So let's do another one like that. Um, 13 is greater than or equal to X over 2. All right. What would you do here? We would multiply by 2. Okay. So multiply by 2. The first step I'm going to do, though, Let's it's flip it around, okay? I just think it's going to help you. And it doesn't take very long. x over 2 is less than or equal to 13. See how I flipped it? This symbol pointed towards the x. It's still pointing towards the x. But now I'm going to take your advice and multiply both sides times 2. So x is less than or equal to 26. I filled in circle. Why is this one filled in? Because it um great no, le, no greater than no, less, less than, than and um right. It could be equal to twenty six. So we're including that. And then which way are we gonna go? Mm -hmm. Up to twenty five. Up to twenty five, right? Because x is less than or equal to 26, so 25 is less than 26. We want to include that. All right, there's one last trick we can use. And this trick is kind of weird. So we're going to look at it in a couple ways. If I ever have a negative number times x, right? If I ever, when I'm solving these, if I multiply or divide by a negative number, something weird happens. So in this case, I need to divide this by negative 2. Watch what I'm going to do. What? What changed? What? Because you divide this by? Oh, yeah. I divided by a negative number, and it flipped this sign. It flipped it around. It was less than, now it's greater than. Could that possibly be true? Yeah, because yeah, the negative is less than. How could we find out if that's true? Well, what we could do is pick numbers for x and see if it actually works. Because what this is saying is negative 2 times some number One. is less than or equal to 4. So negative 2 times what numbers would be less than 4? Negative 2 times 1 would be less than or equal to 4. Because that would be negative 2 is less than or equal to 4, which that's true. And we can also do 2. 2. So negative 2 times 2 would be, oops, would be negative 4. Right? So that one worked. Negative 4 is less than or equal to 4. That's true. We could do eight. Yeah, actually, we could just keep getting bigger forever, because any positive number times a negative number is going to be less than four. And that's what this says. This says that large numbers, numbers bigger than negative two, are going to work. Huh? But why does it make sense to flip this sign? Because if um the, if the x was negative, then that would be a good story and it would stay the same. But if the x is not negative, it's positive. Ooh, I really like that way of thinking about it. So if it said negative x is less than or equal to two, yeah, that's a really cool way of thinking about it, right? It would stay the same. But when we get rid of this negative, essentially what we're doing is we're moving the x over here. Normally we would get rid of a negative by multiplying by negative 1, but I could also get rid of it by just moving the x over. So that flips the sign. When we're multiplying or dividing by a negative, that is technically what we're doing. We've never thought about it like that before, but it's true. When we multiply or divide by a negative, we're actually flipping around our equation. 
And so when we multiply or divide an inequality by a negative, we've got to flip around that sign. So let's do an example all the way through. If I had something like 3 minus 2x is less than or equal to um, 13. How would I solve this? You would get rid of this 3, so subtract it. And I have to subtract it from this side. What's left over here? The minus 2x, or so negative 2x. 13 minus 3 is 10. Divide by so negative 2. Okay, I have an alarm going off in my head right now. You should have an alarm going off in your head anytime you multiply or divide by a negative number. And that alarm should tell you, bleep, 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 flip the sign. Right? So these cancel, and I have to remember, okay, I divided by a negative number. I flip this around. Then how do we graph that? What am I going to do? All over solid. How do we know? This line right here, right? If you have the line underneath, you fill in the dot. Okay? Which way am I going to go? Let's see if this is true. So this graph is telling me that negative 1 would be a solution to this original problem. I want to see if that's really true. 3 minus 2 times negative 1 is less than or equal to 13. Let's see if it's true. Okay, what is 2 times negative 1? We have to do multiplication before we can do subtraction. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. So 3 minus negative 2 is less than or equal to 3. 3 minus negative 2 is the same thing as 3 plus 2 is less than or equal to 13. And 3 plus 2 is 5. Is 5 less than or equal to 13? Yeah, 5 is less than 13. It did work. That really is a solution to that original problem. So what, what we're saying here is any number that falls on this line is going to be a solution to this problem. All right, that's good for today.